on the great solemnity of the Epiphany in which Christ is manifested to the world as our Lord and Savior, I pray that uh, God will bless uh, all of you, all you wonderful viewers of Shalom World, that God may abundantly fill you with uh, the light of the gospel and give you uh, each day the grace to live in accord with the gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Shalom World, God's own channel. A warm welcome to all the viewers of Shalom World Television to this talk series. My name is Jensen Joseph. I live in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I have a beautiful wife and three young children. This talk is going to continue our discussion on the right attitude towards prayer. In the previous talk, I talked about how Jesus understood the seriousness of the situation. What was the situation? Satan had demanded to sift the apostles like wheat to destroy them. Jesus, knowing the dangers of the situation, the scripture says that he prayed for them. How did he pray? With loud cries and tears. He prayed to the one who was able to save. Jesus was convicted that God the Father could do something. He was the only one because God is all powerful and mighty. And so, and he realized how dangerous the situation was. He was concerned about the apostles. And so he shed tears with loud cries and tears. And he prayed that God's will be done, not his will. That's how Jesus prayed. And, and because of this, the scripture says that Jesus was heard by the Father because of his reverence. And in the last discussion, I was asking, do we have the same attitude? Do we have the same reverence? So I want to continue this, this discussion, this uh, uh, reflection on having reverence, the element of reverence in our prayers, and really sharing the burden of God. We know that in today's society, God is greatly concerned about the church, about his people. There is a huge burden in the heart of God because many people are walking away from the faith. And we know that in every time, especially when we look at the history of the church and the life of the saints, whenever the church went through a difficult time period, God put, shared that burden. God is not the God. Our God is not a God who keeps the burden to himself. He wants to share some of that with his children. And so he approached the hearts of many saints and he put that concern in them for what was happening in their time, in their society. And they basically were given the grace to sacrifice themselves uh, through much prayer and tears and, and hard work, working for the salvation of souls. And when, when the saints responded to God's invitation to share that burden, their prayers became powerful and they had an impact, an internal impact on the world because their prayers had reverence. And whenever we are not willing to share the burden of God, we lack reverence. And so let us talk a little more about what is happening in the world today. We, when we look at the, the functions of a mother, a mother has three primary functions. A mother cleanses the child, corrects the child, and a mother feeds the child. We know that we call the church, our Catholic Church, Mother Church. And the Catholic Church also has three primary functions. Catholic Church cleanses us through the sacrament of baptism. The Catholic Church sanctifies us or corrects us through the sacrament of confession. The Catholic Church feeds us through the sacrament of the Eucharist. And so we can see that through these uh, three ways, in other words, through the sacramental life, 
the church is preparing each and every one of its children for heaven preparing us to go to heaven by cleansing us correcting us and feeding us so sacramental life is very important is very necessary for a person to reach heaven very very important and satan knows this and so his uh, goal is to eliminate the sacraments because if you eliminate sacraments if you eliminate the possibility for a person to go to heaven then satan has accomplished his his agenda he has won the battle and so in order to eliminate sacraments satan knows that he has to eliminate priesthood and that is why in today's society you see a tremendous attack on the priesthood basically uh, what is uh, uh, you know satan is after the priest and attacking and and discouraging people to consider the religious vocation uh, also we realize that Uh, there is a statistics that says like this in order for a culture to maintain itself for more than 25 years the required fertility rate is 2.11 children per family but the reality is today's society is that the fertility rate of many christian communities is much lower than that christian communities are adopting lifestyles that are driving them out of existence we see in europe within many countries faith and morality are an are at an all time low at the lowest point in certain countries churches are closing down in large numbers it is hard even in certain places to find a church with daily mass the monasteries and convents are closing down religious vocation is going down and the conflict within the church is increasing and also in jeremiah chapter 29 verse 7 uh The scripture says that promote the welfare of the city to which I have exiled you pray for it to the Lord because upon its welfare depends your welfare if we personalize the scripture it says like this if i live in the city of kalamazoo or in the state of michigan or in the country of the united states i can pray i can say it like this promote the welfare of the united states in which i have placed you pray for the united states to the lord because upon the welfare of the united states is going to depend your welfare and we see this played out in the life of lot because when lot and abraham who were cousins used to live uh, next to each other but their servants began to have conflict and so lot and abraham agreed that they should be separate they should go separate ways and lot abraham told lot that if he chooses to go west abraham will go east if lot wants to go east abraham will go west and so lot looked about and he saw the cities of sodom and gomorrah they were rich and flourishing cities a lot of great resources so he chose to go there but lot did not realize that god in fact was the one who sent him there because many years later when god is getting ready to destroy sodom and gomorrah there is a conversation that happens between god and abraham and abraham says if there were 50 people in the city who who feared god would you destroy it and god said no and the number kept coming down all the way to 10 but abraham struggled to find 10 people who honored god And basically what God was saying is when God is the one who chose Lot to go to Sodom and Gomorrah and when he sent Lot there he had entrusted him with a responsibility to promote the faith to promote the spiritual welfare of that city but Lot did not do that and because of that neglect of responsibility primary responsibility Abraham struggled to find him in 10 people and basically what we see is that Lot and his family did not take root in that city There are many people in the world who desire to come to the United States who desire even to be born here. Why is it that I was able to come here? Why is it that I am living here? It's not because of, there is something great in me. It was God's providence, God's plan. But when God placed me in this country, he entrusted me with a primary responsibility. It's okay to try to uh, get a good future and uh, um, uh, get a good job and have a nice family all that all that. But My primary responsibility is the welfare, the spiritual welfare of this country. Am I focusing on that? Am I doing anything about that? 
if i don't do anything about that if the spiritual welfare of this country suffers then it will affect my welfare and that is what the scripture said and so basically uh, i must realize that i will never take root in this country or my family or my descendants if i ignore the spiritual welfare of this nation and uh, we know that in 1917 our lady of farima said to pray for the conversion of russia else she will spread her errors throughout the world we know that uh, russia was one of the first countries to legalize abortion today abortion is legalized in many countries in other words mother mary knew back then that because of the advancement of technology and uh, media when something bad happens in one country the news is flashed across the globe immediately everybody comes to know about it and the sad reality is that uh, people in other countries want to imitate the evil that is done in a different country and the evil there is a great tendency to imitate the evil and repeat that evil situation and that is what we see happening with abortion so that is why it is very important that we not only be concerned about the spiritual welfare of our country but of all the countries in the world because of how interconnected we are and so this is a great burden in the heart of god the spiritual welfare of all the nations of the people of god and we know that jesus spoke the words i thirst from the cross in other words jesus heart really aches for each and every person who has turned away from him who is in darkness and the salvation story is a story of a god who is madly in love with his people and because of this madness this madness in love he was so deeply in love god was willing to go to any extreme the extreme of shedding every drop of blood to save the humanity to save mankind and basically the burden in god's heart is really great and really deep and really genuine we have to accept that and god wants to share this burden with us in fact uh, mother church our catholic church has accepted this burden for the salvation of souls and that is why the catholic church is focused on the salvation of each soul accompanying the person from birth to death till that person gets to heaven through the sacramental life the church prepares the person for heaven and so basically what god is saying is that our attitude in life should not be my life my wife my children my family my career uh my comforts who cares about the other people who who wants to bother about uh what happens to other people if they are walking away from the faith that is okay i am not concerned about that that is the wrong attitude that is not the christian attitude we should weep we should our heart should ache when people walk away from the faith you know we should be crying with our religious our priests our bishops about the state the moral health of our societies today rather than being indifferent to the collapse of morality to the degradation of morality in our country and many other countries we must do everything possible to participate with Christ in his salvific work and that is why Jesus says go out into the whole world and preach the good news so our prayers our prayers need to be uh, directed in such a manner our prayers need to be in such a manner where it is able to embrace other people because through the passion death and resurrection of Jesus God has adopted us into his family and the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 that Jesus lives today forever to make intercession for others to make intercession for them and the question is is this the attitude in our life in other words in our prayers that are offered are we spiritually adopting people the scripture says that god through the passion death and suffering of jesus the death and resurrection of jesus adopted us into his family and jesus now lives forever to make intercession for us and this is the attitude of christ who lives forever to pray for others is this the same attitude in our prayer life when we pray 
when we offer prayers to god are we able to spiritually adopt other people especially people who are away from the faith is there a commitment in our life to pray for the salvation of souls are we living to pray for others christ lives today forever to make intercession for them are we living to pray for others or are we living to pray for us only are we just bothered about my my life my welfare my luxuries my comfort what i need are we living to pray for us only is that our attitude because if that is our attitude we lack reverence if you want reverence in your prayers our prayers have to adopt we have to be able to spiritually adopt other people we have to be able to pray for the well-being of others the salvation of souls we have to live to pray for others now the other question is what is the horizon of our prayers for many the horizon of the prayers is restricted to their own life or to their own families it is the, our prayers are often not able to accommodate anybody beyond ourselves and basically what happens is such attitude will transform us into isolated sterile and sick christians today many christians are isolated sterile and sick because they are not able to accommodate anybody beyond themselves into their prayers the horizon of their prayers is very small the horizon doesn't extend out to embrace every single person in this world and because of that we become isolated sterile and sick christians we are unwilling to share the burden of the heavenly father and the mother church for the salvation of souls this is not the attitude that we should bring to our prayer life In 2 Corinthians Saint Paul says for the love of Christ impels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all in other words when we have have the conviction that Jesus died not only for me but for every single person in this world and God desires that every single person be saved and that is why the scripture says God is extremely patient with each person not wishing that anybody perish when we have that conviction when we are filled with that love of god it impels us to pray for others it impels us to expand the horizon of our prayers to accommodate others not just ourselves because christ died for all so that we may no longer live for ourselves but for him who who died for us and was raised so let us pray today to and ask god for the grace to expand the horizon of our prayers let us be concerned about others let us share the burden of god and our church jesus adopted us into his family through his suffering death and resurrection we need to adopt others into our prayers jesus lives today to make intercession for others we need to live today to pray for others we need to accommodate others into our prayers and not just pray for ourselves because then our prayer has the proper reverence and our prayers will be heard so lord jesus we just ask you for the grace to expand the horizon of our prayers help us to live not for ourselves but to live to make intercession for others as christ lives today to make intercession for us help us to spiritually adopt people when we offer prayers help us to be concerned about their welfare and to pray for them mother mary please help us and pray with us you are our mother not only our mother but the mother of the world because jesus entrusted all of us into your care so give us your attitude to be concerned about others in the name of the father son and of the holy spirit amen Jesus said the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. The church needs many more young men and women to respond to God's call. I'm Father Michael Sparrow from the Bellarmine Jesuit Retreat House. One of the priests highlighted on Vocari 
Shalom World's weekly television show that highlights the diversity of men and women who have responded to God's call to priesthood and religious life. We count on your prayers and your generous gifts to help us continue to produce Vokari and a wide variety of other television inspirational shows seen around the globe for the glory of God. No gift is too small, no gift is too large. Support Shalom World TV, and the next time you tune in, you'll be glad you did.